Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face and the Badness of Badgers, Chapter 6, in which King Toothbrush Weasel goes upstairs to get dressed and comes back down again. Upstairs, King Toothbrush Weasel put on some nice purple underwear with golden crowns all over it. Then he chose some purple pants and a white shirt and a velvet robe trimmed with pretend fur and got dressed. He went to the dressing table, brushed his long golden beard, and put it on. Finally, he combed his hair, straightened his crown, and went downstairs again. Right, he said as he entered. What did you two want to see me about? Well, your majesty, Stink Bomb said, we wanted to ask for your help because the badgers have stolen a $20 bill out of my piggy bank. Badgers, said King Toothbrush Weasel. Impossible. There are no badgers in the kingdom of Great Kerfuffle. I banned them all by royal decree. Do you think the badgers know that? asked Ketchup Face. Of course they do, said King Toothbrush Weasel. Anyway, I had have noticed if Great Kerfuffle was full of badgers all going thing about, being too heavy and spiking things with those big horns on the ends of their noses. Um... Actually, I think that sounds more like rhinoceroses, said Stink Bomb. No, 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 said King Toothbrush Weasel. Rhinoceroses are those little creatures that go squeak and eat cheese and are frightened of the army. I thought those were mouses, said Ketchup Face. Nonsense, said King Toothbrush Weasel. I'll prove it to you. He went to the bookshelf and took down a book called How to Identify a Rhinoceros and leafed through it. Ah, he said after a minute, it does appear that I might have banned rhinoceroses instead of badgers. Oh, well, never mind. I'll just have to send someone on a mission to drive all badgers from the kingdom. You'll do. Off you go. Chapter 7. In which our heroes set off on their quest. A minute later, Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face found themselves leaving the palace with no clear idea of where to go or how to get there, and a firm instruction from King Toothbrush Weasel to rid the kingdom of every badger within its borders by lunchtime. Stink Bomb was a little annoyed by this turn of events, but Ketchup Face was untroubled. Don't worry, Stink Bomb, she said cheerfully. We've been sent on a quest by the king, so... Probably something will happen to help us. Like what? Stink Mom grumbled. It was nearly mid-morning, and he'd only had one breakfast and no snacks, so he was a bit grumpy. Oh, you know, said Ketchup Face. We'll probably meet some animals that are in trouble and need help, and we'll help them because we're kind and nice, and they'll give us magical things that'll help us when we need help, and then everyone will have helped. It. It'll be nice. Stink Bomb rolled his eyes. Don't be silly, he said. That sort of thing only happens in stories. But we are in a story, Ketchup Face pointed out. Oh yeah, said Stink Bomb. I forgot. And just at that moment, they heard a rather bored voice saying, Help. Oh, help. Oh, dear me. Help. Told you, said Ketchup Face. They followed the sound of the voice until it led them to a small gray cat in a red soldier's jacket. Oh, Help, said the cat, without much enthusiasm. Help, help, help. Oh, help, help, help. Hello, poor dear sweet little cat, said Ketchup Face. What can be the matter? Oh, help, said the cat flatly. Help, help, help. For my tail is tangled up with this bit of grass and I cannot get free. Really, said Stink Bomb. Your tail is tangled up with a bit of grass. The cat just shrugged. Quickly, Ketchup Face got down on one knee and freed the cat. A task that, it has to be said, required no effort at all. There, she said, and now you are free, little cat. Oh, hooray, said the cat with no more emotion than before and twitching its tail only a little. I am free. Hooray, 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 hooray. Oh, how can I ever thank you? Well said Ketchup Face. Since you asked, you could give us a magical item to help us on our quest. The 
The cat stared at her without blinking in what can only be described as a sarcastic manner. Oh, what a good idea, it said. Why didn't I think of that? And then it stared some more. So, said Stinkbaum after a long and awkward pause, is that what you're going to do? I suppose so, said the cat reluctantly. Here, because you saved me from this terrible and dangerous bit of grass, I shall give you this shoe. He had produced a rather familiar looking item of footwear and offered it to Ketchup Face. Why, thank you, little cat, said Ketchup Face, reaching out to take it. Just as she was about to take it, the cat snatched it away. Oh, sorry, it said. Maybe that wasn't the thing I was supposed to give you after all. Let me think. Oh, yes, it was. Here you are. It held out the shoe once again. Ketchup Face reached for it. The cat snatched it away. As it held out the shoe a third time, it noticed Stink Bomb's hand moving toward his pocket. Hurriedly, it dropped the shoe on the grass. Thank you, sweet little cat, said Ketchup Face, picking it up. And how will this magic shoe help me? Well, said the cat, if you are ever in danger. Yes, said Ketchup Face. You can put it on and run away. It's quicker than hopping, said the cat, and it turned and disappeared into the long grass with no apparent fear at all of getting its tail tangled again. Told you, said Ketchup Face happily, tying the shoe around her neck so it wouldn't get lost and then hopping on ahead once more, singing to herself. Stink Bomb a lap followed on behind, stopping occasionally to pick an interesting thing and put it in his pocket. After a while, Stink Bomb said, we don't know if we're going the right way, you know. Don't worry, said Ketchup Face. I expect the next animal we meet will be able to tell us. And at that moment, they heard another little voice saying, Help! Help! But this one sounded as if it really meant it. Chapter 8. In which our heroes offer help and are helped in return. Help! said the little voice again, and as they got closer, they could hear frantic splashing voices, splashing noises as well. This way, said Stink Bomb, and he ran ahead, with Ketchup Face hopping along behind him. Soon they came to a grassy bank that sloped down to a stream, and there they saw a heartbreaking sight, struggling for dear life, upside down in the water, and clearly unable to swim was a little shopping cart which waved its wheels helplessly in the air. Don't worry, little shopping cart, we'll save you, shouted Ketchup Face as she and Stink Bomb plunged down the bank and into the raging torrent, which came all the way up to their ankles. Together, they pulled the cart out and set it upright, carefully placing it on the wheels of the bank. Oh, thank you, thank you, gasped the shopping cart. You saved me, how can I ever repay you? What? Hold, said Ketchup Face. We are on a quest to find the badgers. I don't suppose you know where they live, do you? Why, yes, I do, said the little shopping cart happily. They live in the next valley by a magical stream in the middle of an enchanted wood, just next to a small apartment building. Jump into my basket and I will take you there. Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face scrambled into the basket and at once the little shopping cart began to race up the grassy bank. It was terribly exciting. Imagine going on a magical horse ride on the most beautiful horse you have ever seen. Now, imagine that the horse has a squeaky wheel and a saddle made out of hard wire that makes a crisscross pattern on the bottom. Now, imagine that the horse can't go in a straight line and keeps veering off to one side. And now imagine that the horse isn't a horse at all, but is, in fact, a little shopping cart. That's what it was like. Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face thought it was great. Stink Bomb invented a game called Bug Catcher, which involved holding his mouth open and seeing how many bugs he could catch. He gave himself one point for a fly, two points for a beetle, four points for a wasp, and a million points for an elephant. Ketchup Face, meanwhile, sat at the front of the basket, making horsey noises and shouting things like, Giddy up! I shall call you Starlight, 
she said to the shopping cart. Actually, said the shopping cart, my name is Eric. Ketchup Face has the sort of child was the sort of child who never let facts get in the way of good a good game. Giddy up, Starlight, she said, and added a stink bomb. Well, we've met a cat who gave us a shoe, and a horsey who gave us a ride. I'm not a horsey, said the shopping cart, so I wonder who we'll meet next. A million, answered Stink Bomb happily, pulling something out of his mouth and examining it. I've caught an elephant. Don't worry, elephant, said Ketchup Face. Stink Bomb has bravely saved you from his own mouth. Now you can give us something magical to help us on our quest. Then she looked closer. Wait a minute, she said. That's not an elephant. It's a beetle with a big nose. The elephant, if that's what it was, made a little buzzing noise and flew away. Sometime later, the little shopping cart drew to a halt. I can take you no further, it said sadly, for we have reached the enchanted wood where the badgers dwell. Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face looked, but they could see no wood before them. Gosh, said Stink Bomb, it really is enchanted, isn't it? It's invisible, er, no, said the little shopping cart. You're just facing the wrong way. Oh, said Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face together. They turned around and there, dark and forbidding, stood the enchanted wood. You must carry on alone. The shopping cart continued, for the bracken and brambles are too thick for my little wheels to get through. Besides, I promised my mom I'd clean my room this afternoon. But if you ever need help, call me and I'll answer. Unless I'm busy or too far away to hear or watching a good show on TV or something. Farewell, stink bomb and ketchup face. Farewell, starlight, my noble steed, said ketchup face, trying to fling her arms around the little shopping cart's neck but then realizing it didn't have one and settling for patting it on the handle instead. Yeah, bye, shopping cart, said Stink Bomb. Thanks for the ride. They waved goodbye until their little shopping cart was out of sight and then turned and began to walk into the wood. Chapter 9, in which our heroes walk into the wood and have a strange encounter. It's a bit scary, isn't it? Ketchup Face said as they walked deeper into the wood. Stink Bomb reached out to her. You can hold my hand if it makes you feel better, he said. Oof, he added as he fell over. That's not my hand, it's my foot. Sorry, said Ketchup Face. It's a bit dark and gloomy in here. Do you have a flashlight? I think so, said Stink Bomb, picking himself up and rummaging in his pockets. Yes, here's one. He pulled it out and tried to switch it on, but it turned out to be a corn dog, so he ate it. Then he tried again and eventually produced a small flashlight shaped like a squirrel and a bow tie, which played the wheels on the bus when he pushed the switch. It gave out only a very dim light, but it was better than nothing. They set off again. The thick bracken and tangled brambles made it hard going, and the dim beam from the flashlight flickered all around, casting strange shadows. After a while, Ketchup Face said, Why is the light so wobbly and shaky? Because I can't hold it steady, explained Stink Bomb. Why not? asked Ketchup Face. Because I'm hopping, Stink Bomb said. Oh, said Ketchup Face. Why are you hopping? You've got two shoes on. Yes, said Stink Bomb, but you're still holding my foot. Oh, okay, said Ketchup Face. I wonder if we're going to meet someone else soon who can help us find the badgers. Stink Bomb shrugged. Another animal, you mean? He said. There are probably lots of animals in here. Yes, but actually, it might not be an animal this time, said Ketchup Face, who considered herself something of an expert on stories. It might be a strange little man. In lots of old stories, when the heroes are on a quest, it gets to a part where they need help and they meet someone who's going to help them and it's something like just then they met the strangest little man they had ever seen. Just then they met the strangest little man they had ever seen. He had bright beady little eyes and little round ears and a pointy triangular face and he was covered in thick gray and black fur except for his head which was white with two black stripes running from nose to neck. His legs were short and stumpy 
and he had four of them, one at each corner. Oh, and he had a fat stubby tail, and his breath smelled like worms and garbage cans, and he was standing in a clear clearing spray painting the words Badger's Rule on a tree. Hello, strange little man, said Ketchup Face cheerily. Are you going to help us on our quest? Depends, said the strange little man, jumping guiltily and hiding a spray can. What kind of quest is it? Well, said Ketchup Face, I am Ketchup Face, and this is Stink Bomb, and we have been sent by the king to rid the kingdom of all badgers. Yes, said Stink Bomb, but we need to find them first. The strange little man's beady little eyes narrowed, becoming even more beady and even more little. Is that so? He said. And why would you want to get rid of the badgers? Because we have found out all about their evil and wicked doings, said Ketchup Face, who had a strong sense for the dramatic. What? said the strange little man, all sharp, his sharp face looking suddenly worried. All about their evil and wicked doings? Oh, yes, said Ketchup Face, or at least all about the evil and wicked doings we found out about. I suppose they might have done others. I see said the strange little man thoughtfully. So, said Stink Bomb, can you take us to the place where the badgers live? It's by a magical stream next to a small apartment building. Um, not sure, said the strange little man thoughtfully, but I've got lots of friends and some of them might be able to help. Just wait here, I'll be back in a few minutes. And dropping the spray can, he disappeared into the undergrowth. Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face waited. After a moment, Stink Bomb said, Ketchup Face? Yes, said Ketchup Face. Do you think you could let go of my foot now? Um, okay, said Ketchup Face, and she did. After another minute or two, Ketchup Face said, Stink Bomb? Yes, said Stink Bomb. Why do chapters always have to end just when something's happening? What do you mean? asked Stink Bomb. Well said Ketchup Face, like when we got to the palace or when King Toothbrush Weasel went upstairs to get dressed. It's always when something's happening. They never end when you're just standing around or waiting or something like that. They could, though, said Stink Bomb. Could they? Yeah, said Stink Bomb knowledgeably. Chapters can end whenever they like. They could even end in the middle of a... Chapter 10. In which... Stink Bomb finishes his sentence and our heroes find themselves in terrible danger. Sentence, if they wanted to. Gosh, said Ketchup Face impressed. Just then, the strange little man reappeared. Hello again, strange little man, Ketchup Face said brightly. Er, hello, the strange little man said gruffly. I've brought lots of other strange little men. Maybe one of them can help you. And suddenly the clearing was full of strange little men, all of them looking very much like the first and most of them rather unpleasant with unpleasant expressions on their pointy, stripy, furry faces. Hello, strange little men, said Ketchup Face. Right, so uh, all of you other strange little men, said the first strange little man meaningfully. These two are here because they've found out about all the badgers' evil and wicked doings that they've been doing evilly and wickedly. So we're going to um, help them find the badgers. There was some muttering among the strange little men, and they shuffled forward in a way that Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face did not find entirely comfortable. And then one of them, a particularly small strange little man, with a high squeaky voice said in a puzzled tone, But we are the badgers! Shh, shut up, Stuart the badger! Hissed all the other badgers, because this is what they were. But it was too late. Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face had heard. Ketchup Face's eyes narrowed. You never said you were badgers, she said accusingly. Er, we're not said one of the badgers, we're er, lemmings. 
Isn't that right, Rolf the Badger? That's right, Rolf the Badger. Oh, that's that's right, agreed Rolf the Badger. A big badger with a big badge that said Big Badger. We're not badgers at all, are we, Harry the Badger? No, agreed Harry the Badger, taking a sip of tea from a mug marked World's Best Badger. We're not even slightly badgery. Are we Stuart the Badger? <laughs> yes, we are, said Stuart the Badger. Harry the Badger passed him a note that said, pretend you're not a badger. Stuart the Badger read it slowly three times and then added, er, no, we're not. He turned the note over. On the other side, it said, pretend you're a lemming. Er, I'm a lemming, he added. Ketchup Face smiled, a relieved sort of smile. Oh, well, that's all right then, she said. Can you tell us where to find the badgers? But Stingbomb was not so easily fooled. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a book he had borrowed from King Toothbrush Weasel. It was called The Wrong Book, but it was the wrong book, so he put it back and pulled out another one called How to Identify a Badger. He leaped through it quickly, noting the badger's stripy heads, gray and black fur, and thick muscular bodies. Are you sure you're not badgers? He asked suspiciously. Oh, yes, said all the badgers, quite sure. Stink Bomb turned to the chapter entitled Absolutely Foolproof Ways to Identify a Badger, read it carefully, and then reached into his pocket and pulled out a garbage can, a chicken, and a sports car. Immediately, the badgers knocked over the garbage can, frightened the chicken, and drove the sports car too fast. Stink Bomb's eyes widened as he realized the danger they were in. It's the badgers, he yelled. Run! Okay said Ketchup Face sitting down. Can you help me with my shoelaces? Oof, she added as she disappeared under a pile of badgers. Stink Bomb was outraged. That's not fair, he said. Rolf the badger looked up from his position on the top of the pile. Isn't it? he asked. No, it's not, said Stink Bomb firmly. She hadn't finished putting her shoe on. It's cheating to jump on her before she's ready. The badgers blushed. Sorry, they mumbled and got off ketchup face. Stuart the badger even helped her with her shoelace just to make amends. Right, said Stink Bomb. Now you have to give us a head start. Okay, agreed the badgers. And they closed their eyes and began to count to a hundred. They'd gotten as far as 37 when Harry the badger opened his eyes and said, Hang on, we're not supposed to be fair, we're the bad guys. All the other badgers took their paws away from their faces and said, Oh yeah, I forgot. All that is, except Stuart the badger who said, Are we? Oh, get them, cried Rolf the badger. Er, get who? Asked Stuart the badger, looking around puzzled. Those pesky kids, of course, growled Harry the badger. But there was no sign of Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face. Grrr, growled Harry the Badger in an especially growly way, just to prove he was a bad guy. After them! But we don't know which way they've gone, Stuart the Badger pointed out. Rolf the Badger kicked him on the bottom because he wanted to prove he was a bad guy as well. All the other Badgers laughed, not because it was particularly funny, but just because they were bad guys too. Harry the Badger sighed a big sigh. <sighs> We're animals, right? He said, so we can track them down using our animal senses. Right, said Stuart the Badger eagerly. So we should try touching them until we find them? Ralph the Badger gave him a hard stare. How are you going to touch them before we found them? Stuart the Badger scratched his head. I see what you mean, he said. So we should try tasting them until we find them? Harry the Badger thwacked him on the ear. We've got five senses, Stuart the Badger, he said. Figured you'd pick the wrong two for tracking. Oh, said Stuart the Badger. Right, well, he looked all around the clearing, but he couldn't see 
either stink bomb or ketchup face for the very simple reason that they weren't there. Then he tried smelling them, but he couldn't smell anything except for the perfumed blossom of the woodland trees, the sweet smell of the woodland flowers, and the stinky stink of the woodland trash that had spilled out when they knocked the garbage can over. So then he listened very, very hard, and so did all the badgers. After a while, they heard something. In fact, they heard two somethings. Listen, said Rolf the badger. Is it me? Or does one of those noises sound like a frightened chicken? Yeah, agreed Harry the badger. And the other one sounds like a squirrel with a bow tie playing the wheels on the bus. After them, cried all the badgers, except Stuart the badger. But it sounds like they're miles away, Stuart the badger pointed out. We'll never catch them now. Oh, yes, we will, said Harry the badger, because you, Stuart the badger, have failed to notice one very important thing. What's that? asked Stuart the badger. They've left their sports car behind, said Harry the badger. Come on. And all the badgers jumped into the sports car and roared out of the clearing, driving much too fast and knocking the garbage can over again as they left. And that is all for book group for this week. Oh, nope. One more chapter, sorry. Chapter 11. In which there is an exciting chase and ketchup face clears her throat. Then there was a chase, which was really exciting. Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face ran as quickly as they could, and the badgers drove too fast and caught up with them. And Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face tried running even faster, but they couldn't. And the chicken got really, really frightened and stuck its head out of Stink Bomb's pocket and went, Bwah! and the badgers caught up. Except for the chicken, which jumped out of Stink Bomb's pocket and ran away. All right, so it doesn't look quite so exciting written down, but it was. Anyway, then the badgers picked Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face up and put them in the car. Help! Help! shouted Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face, but there was no answer. Then they shouted, Hoof! Hoof! because the badgers had thrown them into the back seat of the car and sat on their faces. Then the badgers drove back to the clearing where they lived and carried Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face into the crumbling apartment building next to their home. There, in a little basement room with horrid brown and mustard yellow swirling carpet on the walls and orange wallpaper on the floor, the children learned the dreadful fate that was to be theirs. Right, said Harry the Badger. We can't have you two going around telling everyone about our evil and wicked doings. No, said Stuart the Badger, especially the one where we're going to get rid of King Toothbrush, we Toothbrush Weasel and replace him with King Harry the Badger. Oh, said Ketchup Face. We didn't know about that one. Didn't you? said Stuart the Badger, surprised. What about the one where we're going to take all the moms and great kerfuffle prisoner and force them to make us lunches every day? Yeah, agreed Rolf the Badger, with worm sandwiches and garbage can gravy. Mmm, yum, said all the other badgers. Nope, said Stink Bomb. We didn't know about that one either. What about, said Stuart the Badger, the one where we're going to put saddles on all the dads and make them give us piggyback rides everywhere? Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face shook their heads. Oh, said Stuart the Badger. Maybe we should let them go. It doesn't look like they do know about our evil and wicked doings after all. Harry the Badger thwacked him on the ear again, except that you just told them, haven't you? So now you've got no choice, Rolf the Badger. Fetch the box. Rolf the Badger fetched a box. It was a big cardboard box. Right, said Harry the Badger. Now for another evil and wicked doing. He laughed a wicked laugh and then passed around a box marked evil mustaches. And each badger twist took one and twirled it evilly. <coughs> what we're going to do, Harry the Badger went on, is put you in this box, and then we're going to mail you to the remote mountain kingdom of Bajorstan, where you'll be put to work painting stripes on second-hand tigers. Stink Bomb thought about this. 
The idea of being put in a cardboard box and mailed to the remote mountain kingdom of Bajorstan and then being put to work painting stripes on secondhand tigers certainly sounded interesting, but wasn't sure he would actually like it. Ketchup Face, on the other hand, was extremely indignant. You can't put me in a box and mail me to the remote mountain kingdom of Bajorstan and make me paint stripes on secondhand tigers, she protested. What about my fans? What fans? demanded Rolf the Badger. Ketchup Face straightened in a most dignified manner. When I'm grown up, she said, I'm going to be a famous singer and people will come from miles around to see me. And if I'm not there because I'm painting stripes on secondhand tigers in the remote mountain kingdom of Bajorstan, they're all going to be disappointed. Oh, said Harry the Badger. That's a shame. Oh, well, never mind. Never mind, said Ketchup Face. Never mind. Um, maybe she could sing a song for us now, suggested Stuart the Badger, who liked songs and was aware that we hadn't had one since chapter two. Good idea, Stuart the Badger, exclaimed Harry the Badger. Is it? asked Stuart the Badger in surprise. He wasn't used to having good ideas. Not really, admitted Harry the Badger. It's Probably a stupid idea, but let's do it anyway. All right, little girl, what are you going to sing for us? Ketchup Face cleared her throat. <clears throat> I'm going to sing a song, which is a work of complete genius, she said. It's probably the best song in the world, and it's called Blueberry Jam. And this is the end of the chapter.